remain standing, we're going to pray. Verse 4, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemeth good to the potter to make it. I'm going to be ministering from the subject tonight, I am still in his hands. God said, go down to the potter's house. And if you listen carefully, I'll preach a supernatural word out of a natural situation. <laughs> go to the mall, man, and sit down at the mall and let me talk to your head. That's basically what it was. It was no different than going to the mall, just an ordinary place. And he said, just shut up a while and sit down and let me talk to you. Prayer is never complete with you talking to God. You have to stay around until that God talks to you. And both of you can't talk at the same time. So he says, go get over in the corner of the potter's house and shut your mouth. <laughs> You always hear people saying, God told them to speak. You don't hear them say, God told them to shut up. <laughs> but the God I know will tell you to shut up. <laughs> Hold your peace. Be still and know that I am God. The battle is not yours, it is mine. What he said is, shut up. And Jeremiah notices just a normal situation. Part of going out in the field amongst the dirt and the rocks and the roots and the grass and the branches and finding some clay, picking it up, cleaning it out in the rocks, roots, branches, got some bugs in it. But I still want it. And he sets it on the wheel that it might become. Two things lay before us. One of them is forming, and the other one is filling. Somebody say forming. forming. Somebody say filling. filling. You got to have both of them say. We spend most of the time in the text dealing with forming, but you understand that filling is involved in it too because he's going to make a vessel, and nobody makes a vessel if you don't have something to put in it. It's just that the text is so involved in the forming that it doesn't waste time talking about the filling because if you can withstand the forming. <laughs> see, the real struggle with God is not the filling. God will take care of the filling if you can stand up to the forming in your life. Some of you right now, you've been wondering what in the world is going on with me. Is that God is forming you. He's forming you. He's preparing you. He's getting you ready for greatness so far beyond what you have ever experienced before. That is having to clean some things out. Move some things around. Forming and filling. That's, that's what God did in the creation. The Bible uses two different Hebraistic terminologies to describe the creation of man. In one verse, it says that God created from the Hebrew word bara, which means to be made without the aid of pre-existent substance. God created man. And then right down from that, it says God formed man, which means pressed or shaped together from something that already existed. And if you don't understand the concept, it's confusing because created suggests that he made him out of nothing. But form suggests that he made him out of something. And so it sounds like either God is schizo or we need a revelation. 
Did you create him? Like, like, like a woman doesn't create a cake. She forms it, but she doesn't create it. To create it is to walk in there and say, let there be cake. I've been, I'm saying some days I wish I could create, you know. She doesn't create, she forms. And on one instance, God says, I created man. And then the next verse, he says, I formed you. And it seems confusing until you understand the triunity of humanity. That man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. That when it talks about what God created, it's talking about his spirit. He didn't use anything in the earth to make his spirit. He created his spirit. And when it starts talking about form, it's talking about his body. And when God created the spirit, and then he formed the body, and took what he had created, and blew it into what he had formed, and man became a living soul. He became a living message. He became aware of himself. He said, I, I know who I am. You will never know who you are until God breathes on you. When the breath of the Almighty comes upon you, that's when you begin to become aware of who you are. God only formed the body of man because he had something to fill it with. If there were nothing to go in the body, man would have been a ceramic. But when God filled what he had formed, man became. God is in the business of forming and filling. He formed the earth and then filled it with vegetation. He formed the sea and filled it with fish. He formed the air and filled it with birds. He formed the body of man and then filled it with his spirit. He formed the tabernacle and filled it with furniture. He formed the temple and filled it with Shekinah glory. He formed the church and filled us with the Holy Ghost. God is in the business. Just as surely as the word was spoken in the valley of the dry bones and he caused the bones to come together, bone to his bone, and he formed the body and then said, let the wind fill that body. Whenever you see God forming anybody, rest assured, baby, he's going to fill them with the blessing. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Why is that important? Because when you're going through the forming, it feels like everything in you is about to break. And it helps you to understand that when this is over, God is going to fill you with a glory you never had. Touch somebody and tell them something is about to happen. around you is turbulent it is only a prerequisite that declares to you that heaven has a directive to get you ready for this next move get ready get ready get ready because God never forms what he will not fill What's he going to fill me with? I don't know. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the thing that God has in store for them that love it. But I dare you to get ready. He will fill. is about to happen in your life. I come to you tonight not as a performer 
or a comedian or an entertainer. I come to you as a postman to bring to you a registered letter that's got your name on it that God is getting you ready for something so awesome that all the demons in hell are nervous about what God oh praise the Lord somebody Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in my toes get ready And so the potter picked up the clay. I could stop there because I'm, I'm just happy to be picked up. <laughs> when, when you've really been in the mud, you're just glad to be picked up. When you've been in the roots and the rocks and the troubles and the trials and been stepped on and walked over top of and rejected, it just feels good sometimes to know he picked you up. It doesn't matter whether you get to work on the committee or whether you put out an album or whether you preach anywhere or whether you get in the clique or the club. When you really been up under the foot of me, you're just glad to be picked up. He picked me up. Great God of mercy. The Lord! Pick me up. Hell tried to hold me down, but the Lord said, Pick him up. Picked the clay up. Paul said, He has raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. He picked me up. I admit, He had a lot of purging cleaning out to do a lot of impurities left in the clay but he set it on the wheel to set it into a mode of processing some of you don't realize it but God is processing you he's purging you through the process and you've been praying Lord fix it and straighten it out and move it and take it away he said no that's what I'm using to get you together I'm using that problem to teach you how to love the unlovely. I'm using that situation to teach you patience. I'm using that situation to get more anointing out of your life. I'm using that storm in your life to teach you how to trust me in a crisis. No, I can't stop it. Don't panic. It's just a test. <laughs> what do you think I raised you up for? Put you on the wheel. How many folks have ever been on the wheel? How many folks somebody say, I'm on the wheel right now? <laughs> yes, Lord. When you're on the wheel, everything is spinning. It's just spinning. Just spinning. Sometimes spinning so fast, everything's a blur. Can't see what's going on. Because everything is spinning. Have you ever had everything spinning? Before you could straighten out this, here comes that. By the time you try to deal with that, here comes something else. When nobody's looking, you go off by yourself and cry somewhere because everything is spinning. And you've been saying, Lord, stop the spinning. But God is not going to stop it. He's not going to stop it. But in the midst of the spinning, look up under the table and see whose foot is on the wheel. I praise him tonight because he's got his foot on the wheel. I'm 
glad to know that the devil does not control the spinning in my life. If the devil could have got his foot on the wheel, he'd have threw you off years ago. But God, God, oh, bless his name. God has his foot on the wheel. He knows just how fast to spin you. He'll spin you and spin you and spin you, and then he'll say, that's enough. Give us some rest. That's enough. It's getting to her. Slow it down. Slow it down. Dry our tears up for her. I'm not going to let you spin her today. She's at the breaking point. Stop. Thank you, Lord, that you control my times. Thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign. Thank you, Lord, that you are still in control. Thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against me shall be able to... If the devil had ever got his foot on the pedal, he would have destroyed you years ago. Thank God. That my times are in his hand. Listen, God has been closely monitoring your situation. Nothing going on in your life has escaped his eye. He is looking at you right now. As storms and winds blow, he is monitoring your times, preparing you, getting you ready, and periodically, he'll just give you a blessing. Just, he'll just bless you. Like the clay that spins on the wheel. Every so often, the potter would just reach out and touch the clay. Somebody say thank you for a touch. That's why I don't let anybody laugh at how I praise God. Because I need a touch. Going through all I'm going through, I got to have a touch. If I hadn't got a touch, sometimes I'd have lost my mind. Just a touch. Some people don't know it, but if it wasn't for a good hallelujah, you wouldn't have been able to go through what you've been through. Don't let anybody stare you down. When you get ready to praise the Lord, praise Him. A touch will make a difference. A touch will hold you together. A touch will bring you out. Oh, 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 he touched me. If he didn't fix me, he touched me. If he didn't straighten it out, he touched me. Lord, I thank you for a touch, one touch. And all of a sudden, I can take what I thought I couldn't take. Just because in the midst of the spinning, every now and then, he touched me. A touch. And all of a sudden, he shapes something in my life goes against my background my childhood and my traumas and says i'm gonna make you do it because of me i'm gonna take you through it because of me you're gonna have the character because i'm going to touch that place have you ever had to touch something in you you wouldn't have been able to take it but he touched you you would have walked out of the house but he touch you. You'd have given up the ministry, but he touched you. You'd have told your husband, I'm leaving, but he I, I know you I know I know you can't I know you can't act like you know what I'm talking about. So keep looking straight ahead. But but somebody knows that if the Lord hadn't touched you, your marriage wouldn't have survived. It was just a touch. Somebody knows that that your home is a miracle. A miracle. A miracle you can't talk about. A miracle you can't tell about. A miracle you dare not discuss. Because you can't let anybody know that if the Lord hadn't touched you at that moment in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands and begin to worship him. I feel the dew descending. 
the dew of the Holy Spirit is coming upon this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for a touch. Thank you for a touch. Nobody knows, Lord, but I thank you for a touch. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Send the dew. Wet the clay. Wet the clay. Where the clay is cold and hard, wet the clay. Wet the clay till we can laugh again. Wet the clay until we can cry again. Wet the clay until we can love again. Wet the clay until we can worship again. Wet the clay till the anointing overshadows us. Wet the clay until tumors are cast out. Wet the clay until bodies are healed. Wet the clay until blood diseases are touched. Wet the clay tonight. Hallelujah. Hey God, I thank you. I feel the dew descending. If it were not for the potter wetting the clay, it would become too rigid. But it is the occasional splash of moisture that causes the clay to have the elasticity of change. You cannot walk with God unless you are willing to change. People who are too rigid don't make it with God. People who have got one, two, three, four steps and you must always do it like this or it's not God, you won't be around long. You see, God does whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it, and God is not going to give you a recipe. Because if you get a recipe, then the recipe becomes Lord and you start telling God how to do it. God healed several blind men in the Bible and each one he healed a different way. One he spoke to and the other one he spit on the ground and mixed mud and put on it. The other one he spat in his eye. God said, I'm not going to let you have no recipe. There are a whole lot of ways to bless you. God's got a whole lot of ways to bless you. God's got a whole lot of ways to bless you. You don't hear me, but I said God has got a whole lot of ways to bless you. That's why I don't get upset when somebody doesn't help me that I thought was going to help me. Don't think I'm in trouble because you're not there. God has got a whole lot of ways to bless you. God will bless you through your enemy. He'll make somebody who don't even like you have to bless you. God has got a <laughs> Never let the devil see you sweat. Because <laughs> God's got a whole lot of ways to bless you. And, it, and this is good, this is good. Because the Bible says the vessel that he made of clay. Now, now I have to take issue because it really wasn't a vessel yet. God says some things that if anybody else would say them, it would be a lie. Like he called you holy. <laughs> and unblameable. Look at somebody just laugh. <laughs> Especially if you sit beside somebody who acts like they really are holy. And I'm like, just go, ha, ha. some things that if anybody else would say them, it would be a lie. But you see, God calls those things that are not as though they were. Because God knows that if he says it, though it isn't when he says it, he has the power to make it become whatever he says. So you see, some things God will call you on credit. You're not there yet, but he'll go ahead and extend you the credit. 
It's not that he's got so much confidence in you. He's got so much confidence in his hand. He knows that he can take that junk on the wheel and make it become what he said it was. So he goes ahead and calls it what it will be because of his hand. It shall be whatever he said. said some things over you that haven't even come to pass yet but because of his hand in your life they shall shortly come to pass you better get ready you better get ready whatever he said it will surely come to pass I don't care if everything looks contrary to what he is saying if God said he was going to do it do it all. He will bring it to pass. See, when he picks a clay up, he has something in mind. And nothing that he sees in reality discourages him from what he had in mind. Because the only thing that's standing between what it is and what it shall be is the hand of the potter and he knows that he is a master craftsman such a master that he is not intimidated by the stuff he's working with he knows that when he gets to working it he can make it become what he said it will be so he goes ahead and says I'm going to call you healed already <laughs> You say, Lord, I still feel the knot. He say, you already healed. Because he knows that when he gets through touching you, you shall be what he said. Can I tell you something else? There's a fight going on in your life right now. And I want, to, I want to say something at the risk of just blowing your computer. The enemy is not fighting you over where you is. He is fighting you over where you shall be. That's why when he fights me, I get happy. Because I know I must shall be something awesome for me to be fought like this. Hallelujah. God is going to work a wonder. Shake hands with somebody and tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. In spite of where you is, where you are, for you intellectuals, where you is, for the rest of you. <laughs> God will talk to you about where you shall be. And you're praying about where you is, but God's answering about where you shall be. Because God don't care where you is. He knows where you shall be. And as long as he touch you, you shall be what he says in spite of where you is. I just lost all the English teachers, but. <laughs> this, actually, actually this text would be, we would be finished. That's, that, 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 that's good. We, we, could, we could just finish right there because it's just, you know, right up there with the shell bees. You know, not what you hear. Shell bees. Yeah. The power.
going to become. As many have believed him, to them gave you the power to become. Become what? Whatever you need to be. You got the power to become. That's awesome right there. Regardless of where you start, by God's grace, you got the power to become whatever he says. That would be enough. But there is a problem in this text. We must, we must discuss this problem. It's an embarrassing blight on the face of a marvelous text. A flaw, an incident, an imperfection, a blemish on the face and the terrain of this story has created a dilemma that boggles the mentality of the theologian as he wrestles with the complexity of the composition. You see, the problem is the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Now, that's, that's, that's what really is embarrassing. See, if the vessel had fallen out of his hand, then I could explain why it got marred. I can say, well, the vessel fell out of his hand. And if he just stay in his hand and stay in the church and stay in his will and stay in his way, you wouldn't be going through what you're going through right now. Why did you fall out of his hand? But the problem is the vessel was marred while it was still in the hand of the party. Now we must deal with the reality of the fact that you can be in the church and still have a problem. You can be saved and be marred. You can be in his hand and be wounded. You can be his vessel, his vessel, and still have a blemish a scar, a struggle, a wound, a memory, an incident, an accident that traumatizes the complexion of your Christian experience. The vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand. Listen at how the Holy Spirit tips on this text. It doesn't say that the hand of the potter slipped. It doesn't say that he added too much water or that he spinned it too fast. It doesn't blame him for the injury. It just declares that the injury occurred while the vessel was cradled in the hand. Do not criticize the craftsmanship of the potter. Because regardless of how skillful the potter is, the problem is not in his hands, it's in the clay he's working with. And in the process of becoming, we often become marred in his hand. Now, it was supposed to have been a vessel. Can you wait on me a little while tonight? It was supposed to be able to hold precious ointment. But if a vessel is marred, who can use a broken vessel? Who can use a vase that won't hold water? What good is a mason jar if there's a crack in it? Now the purpose of the potter seems to be destroyed by the weakness of the material. And Satan giggles and hell claps because the vessel is marred in the hand of the potter. Now the problem is, whatever you put in it, it will leak. 
of us causing us to have the most trouble in our churches is that we are trying to lead leaky people. <laughs> Let me explain before you walk out. Let me explain leaky people. Leaky people shout all over the church Sunday morning. Don't even come back Sunday night. Leaky people have got all kind of dreams and visions and revelations. Then if you don't acknowledge them, they get angry and say, I'm leaving. Leaky people, I don't care how much fire you preach into them tonight. When you see them the next service, they'll be depressed again. They will run all over the church, hold up the service, lay it out in the floor, speak it in tongues. And argue with their companions all the way home. Leaky people. That's what's killing our marriages. Leaky people. Because no matter how much you tell them you love them, they never feel loved because what you told them last week has leaked out this week. Leaky people, they're always in a deficit. They're always thirsty. They're always needing. Tell me you love me. Tell me. Tell me. Do I look nice? Does this look nice on me? Am I all right? How did I sing? How did, leaky people. And you tell them, and they need to be told again. And you tell them, and they need to be told again. And you tell them, and they need to be told again. And you tell them, and they need, oh, y'all getting kind of quiet. And you tell them, and they need to be told again. And you wonder, well, what happened to what I told you last week? Well, it just. <laughs> leaky people are desperate. And desperate people will do desperate things because no matter how much you give them it is never enough leaky people will live they'll leave Jim for John and then leave John for David and then leave David for Richard and there's always something wrong with everybody because nobody can love you enough if you are leaky Leaky people will leave this church for that church and that church for the other church and run here and there and everywhere. Nobody's going to be able to preach good enough for you, baby, because you're leaky. You'll never be fulfilled. All the pain of not ever being full, the nagging emotional, spiritual hunger that happens in a heart that's cracked. No wonder Jesus said, bind up the wounds of the broken heart. You see, when how many of you remember the woman with the alabaster box? She took the precious ointment, they call spicknard in the Bible, and put it, it was in an alabaster box, and when Jesus came, she broke it at his feet. Alabaster was designed, history says it came from India, it was used to hold precious ointment. If it was, this wasn't the Kmart stuff, this was the good stuff. And alabaster was so good at keeping the ointment that they tell me that if you put precious ointment in an alabaster box, you can't even smell the perfume because the alabaster will even hold the fragrance. God wants to devise a container that will hold the aroma of his anointing. Somebody who will get revived and stay revived. Somebody who'll be happily married today and happily married 10 years from now. Somebody who feels good about themselves. Every morning, God needs an alabaster box. And that's what he made of clay. Oh, 
It was marked in the hand. What am I going to do with all of this precious ointment? I was going to put it in you. I was going to use you in the ministry. I was going to bless you. I had a companion for you, a promotion, a position. I was going to anoint you with fresh oil. What can I look at that crack? Justice said, throw it away. Why are you holding on to this broken vessel? The law said, crush it up under your feet. Holiness said, there's a flaw in it. Sanctity said, it has made a mistake. Mercy said, can I have a word? for a little mercy. I'd have been thrown away years ago if it had not been for a little mercy. Mercy said, wait a minute. Mercy said, I want to call grace to the stand. Grace said, your honor, I know that the vessel is marred. I can't deny that it's flawed. I can't deny that it's made mistakes and it's weak and it's flawed and it's frail and I know that it's not what you had in mind. But Grace said, if you just hold on to it, you can make it home. The judge hits the scaffold. The prosecution rests. The courtroom is quiet. The sentence is suspended. On one word, it says, so. He made it again. Another. I'm going to do the sentence. I'm going home. Is this all right? He made it. That sentence held me spellbound for days. He made it again another. Whenever I study a scripture, I break it down into phrases. I enter it into the computer in phrases and parts. And I says, he made slash. I hear you, God. You're saying that if there be any help for us, you've got to do it. You're saying that the vessel can't make itself, it can't save itself, it can't deliver itself, it can't fix itself, that even though it's broken and it needs to be right, it can't help the condition in its life, that if you don't fix it, it can't be fixed, and if you can't do it, it can't be done, that you're not going to send the angels, you're not going to send Gabriel, you're not going to send Michael, you're not going to send anybody else to do it, that this is a job for God, and you're going to do it. He made You are telling me that you are not intimidated by the scars in my life. That in spite of my condition, you still have not given up hope that someday I'll be able to hold what you wanted to put in my He made. You're telling me that you moved the law and pushed back the requirement and said in spite of my flaws, you saw my need and you made, he made. It, he made it. Okay, God, I see it. There it is, cracked, broken. I see it. He made it again. You can, if you did it once, you can do it again. If you blessed me yesterday, you can bless me today. If you raised me up before, you can raise me up again. If you loose me before, you can loose me up. God can do it again. Tell somebody and tell them he'll do it again. 
Somebody's discouraged tonight, but you don't recognize that God can do it again. Somebody's depressed, but you don't know that God can do it again. I don't care how you muffed it and you blew it and the devil's been accusing you and saying it's your fault and maybe he's right, but thank God for mercy. God can do it again. He made it again. Here's the problem. Another. The another is the problem. Because I thought it was it. He made it again another. Say that with me. He made it again another. Say it again. He made it again. Say it again. He made it again another. Which one is it? Is it it or another? He made it again another. It was it. No, it was another. It's another vessel. No, it's still it. It's it. No, it's not it. It's another. It's another. No, it's not another vessel. Jake, it is it. Which is it, God? It or only God can do it. Only God can make it again another. your neighbor and tell them it is me but it's not me only God only God only God only God only God can bless you and raise you up and fix you until it is you but it's not you I am the same but I'm not the same it is me but it's not me I want the devil to know that it is me but it's not me. What used to work, it go work anymore. What used to depress me, won't depress me anymore. What used to make me give up, won't make me give up anymore. It is me, but it is not. somebody and tell them it's not going to work. The thing that used to work is not going to work. Because I went through something that changed me. And what used to bother me doesn't bother me anymore. What I used to cry about, I don't cry about anymore. What used to make me go home and feel sorry for myself is not going to work anymore. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, I made up in my mind I am going all the way with Jesus. I'm not the same. I may look the same, but I am not. Hallelujah! Glory to God! So, I thought I was finished. I said, Lord, okay, I hear you. I'm finished. I'm through. This is it. He says, you missed the whole point. I said, what? You mean I've been studying like this? I missed the whole point. He said, you missed the whole point. Said, what do you mean? I saw some beautiful stuff in there. That was good stuff, God. He said, you missed the whole point. I said, what did I miss? I, I scraped it. I skinned it. I sliced it. I broke it in the sailors. I said, how could I miss all? He said, you missed the whole point. Go back and read it again. He said, you remember in your math class when you used to divide and multiply fractions? The old teachers used to tell you to reduce to its lowest common denominator. He said, you can't work with this scripture until you reduce it to its lowest common denominator. I said, God, what is the lowest common denominator? He said, there is one thing in the whole story 
that is the lowest common denominator. One thing that doesn't change. I thought, what is it? I said, everything changed. I went back through the story. I said, he picked it up. He put it on the wheel. He spinned it around and around on the wheel. It was cleansed by the washing of water by the word. He spinned it, but he controlled the spinning with his foot. If he had not touched it, it would have never become what he said it would be. But because of the spinning and the water of the word and the touch of the Lord, it began to look like what the master had in mind. He pulled it up. He never pressed it down. He's always raising it higher than it was before. Even in the spinning, he's always lifting me higher than I was before. He held it up. He blessed it. It was marred, but he never gave it up. He stuck with it through the storm and the rain. He made it again another. He fired it. He fixed it. He restored it. He kept it. He raised it up. And then it occurred to me, at every stage, whether it was raised or on the wheel or wet or spinning or touched or cracked or being reshaped or being remade, whether things were going right or wrong or up and down. Everything changed about the circumstance, the situation, the environment, the perfection. The only thing that stayed the same at every stage, in every circumstance, in every trial, in every trauma, in every distress. The lowest common denominator, the one point that was always there is through every storm and test and trial. It was always in his hand. stage in your life stand to your feet I want to tell you something through every stage in your life when things were going right when things were going wrong when trouble was everywhere when you were broken and wounded when you felt like dying when circumstances had overwhelmed you, when you were on the breaking point and you couldn't even tell anybody that you felt like throwing in the towel, when people surrounded you and when all of them walked away and left you, when you were in winter and spring and summer and fall, no matter what stage you were in in your life, when you had lots of money, and when all the money was gone, when your companion was there, and when they left you, when they didn't understand you, when you turned your back to the wall and let quiet tears slip across the bridge in your nose, and there was no one there to wipe your eyes, there is one thing that always stayed the same at every corner, in every crisis, in every trauma, in every dilemma. You were old. In his hand, he never let you go. And the next time the devil accuses you and brings up your past or talks about your flaws or your failures, don't lie, tell him yes, yes, yes. All of that may be true. But through it all, I am still in his hands. In the future, I would love this channel to be an over-the-top platform, getting a play button, of course, and 
reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days. Let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gifts of any amount are welcome. Catch App is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? Because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.